Hey, Woods. You look like having shit. Hey, Reznov. My name is Victor. You guys ready to get the bad guys? <laughs> Black Ops 1 is not only one of the best Call of Duties of all time, but it's one of the best games of all time. The story goes deeper than deep throating. Okay, look, just imagine this, okay? The game starts with you being tied down to a chair with some guy in a window screaming about some numbers. I mean, damn, my math teacher was a sex offender, but he's retired now. Our name is Alex Mason. We are a CIA member involved in Black Operations, which is what they would call a top secret classified mission. And it appears that we're already getting interrogated. Now, already one of the most unique beginnings to a game ever. And it's also got the greatest main menu I've ever seen. Scene. I want to get it pregnant. All right, just, just stop. Our journey starts in Cuba, 1961. Our mission is to assassinate Fidel Castro. You're with your boy, Frank Woods, who is just one of the best characters ever created. I mean, am I glazing right now? Just tell me that every molecule of this game isn't perfect. I might be glazing. I might be D-writing. Fine. I don't care. Call me Mia Khalifa because I'm going to ride this game's dick. So you, Frank Woods, and of course the man, Joseph Bowman, my African brother. You all land on Cuban soil and storm the beach before shooting your way through a village. We finally make it to Castro's compound and quietly sneak into his Kim Kardashian mansion. Okay, maybe we aren't so quiet. But we get some epic scenes and finally make it to Fidel while he was raw dogging his girl. And we shoot a bullet at his noggin while he's mid stroke, which goes through his flipping forehead. Then we, of course, put the down girl too. No more edging for you, buddy. So now we gotta call in reinforcements, run down the mountain, and make it just in time to the airplane. But we realize that the plane isn't gonna be able to take off, so we jump off and sacrifice ourselves to clear the runway before getting knocked out like I'm Alexander Volkanovsky. But hey, at least we accomplished the mission, right? Right? Well, no, because we wake up and find out that no, 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 we didn't actually kill Fidel Castro. We killed a guy who looked exactly like him and wore the exact same clothes as him. Uh, you killed a double. Man, fuck. You. He's my gift to you. Bro, who do you think I am? Your slave? The man's name is Nikita Dragovich, and he sends us away to a Russian prison camp by the name of Vorkuta. Vorkuta was a real-life gulag, and over 200,000 people lost their lives inside of it. One of the deadliest camps to ever exist, and now we're stuck in it. But no worry, because in Vorkuta, we meet a man by the name of Viktor Reznov. From the Soviet Union, Viktor Reznov fought for his country in World War II, and we play alongside him in Call of Duty World at War. He was a good man who wanted to get all the Germans and restore the motherland. And now he's gonna be our ticket. Get out of this bit. However, not only were we sent to Vorkuta, but we were also programmed by Dragovich, Kravchenko, and Steiner. They brainwashed us to become an MK Ultra double agent for the Soviet Union and to assassinate our president. But back in Vorkuta, Reznov has created his famous eight step plan and it starts off by punching him in the face. Us, along with every other prisoner, is fighting for our freedom. But then Reznov says something my little cousin also told me Victory cannot be achieved without sacrifice, Mason. Then they open the door and get gunned down. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna make it out for you. We run through the guards, break the armory, and also lose our boy Sergei in the process. Pull out the minigun before getting drenched in tear gas, but somehow Reznov just walks through it unaffected like a G and pulls us out. We wake up, hop on a motorcycle. I need to catch the bus, but then we finally jump for freedom, and Reznov doesn't follow us. Your turn! Come on! Step eight, Reznov! Freedom! For you, Mason! Not for me! Reznov! We return to the CIA, and we're going Going on a field trip to meet the president. We're escorted there and then finally face to face with the man himself. We're having a good conversation about Dragovich and Marilyn Manson before Mason just pulls out the strap and bow. It appears that we shot JFK in the head, but no worry, he doesn't actually die here. It was just a hallucination. He does die like right after though. But that wasn't really because of our brainwashing. Yes, Alex Mason did kill JFK, but it was an inside job by the CIA. And if you don't believe me, go watch the other video I made on this, okay? But moving on, we're heading to Vietnam, baby. Finally reunited with our boy Woods and he gets to meet Hudson. We're riding in the whip, but then boom, this guy we hired doesn't even know how to drive, so we crash right into the head of a Vietnamese attack. We make our way through these rice eaters. I mean, uh, Woods almost gets popped, but we're able to save him like the friend that we are. But after this, we get word that there's a Russian defector out here in Vietnam that's gonna give us some intel and she. So we come in on the helicopter before getting shot the flip down and crashing. You and Woods are able to make it out the building you landed in and are fighting through all the Vietnamese shoulders before you break through the door and oh shit, no, please, please, I'm actually a Chinese guy. Oh, my. Yes, it turns out Victor Reznov is still alive. He was the Russian defector. He saves our life and gives us the intel we needed, and then Woods and Bowman also get to meet Reznov. Are these your men? Woods, Bowman. I am Reznov. What took you so long, Mason? 
That intel better be worth it. But guys, it's rude to not respond, you know? We make it to the checkpoint, then get told that everything is about to blow up. So we hop on the boat and make it to safety. Reznov, what the? After this, we get to play in the perspective of Reznov alongside our old buddy, Dmitry Petrenko, who is the guy we play as in World at War. But we are actually taking orders from none other than Dragovich and Kravchenko. And our mission is to capture Frederick Steiner and bring him back alive. But if we fail, we will be shot. Doesn't seem very fair to me, but okay. Then on the back of the truck, we speak to Dmitry and Reznov actually tells him how he does not trust Dragovich at all. And it turns out that Reznov is the one telling this story to Mason while they were in Vorkuta. He goes on to say that Dmitry Petrenko was the bravest man he ever knew and deserved to die a hero, but Stalin had other plans. Reznov and his crew fight in the snowy hills against a bunch of German soldiers and of course, we show no mercy like we did in World at War. Then we are finally able to locate Steiner and he makes fun of us after getting him and he tells us to take him to Dragovich. Reznov tells us that he was disgusted with the lack of remorse that Steiner had for all the atrocities he committed with the Nazis. I mean, screw this German guy. Reznov also says that he wanted to kill Steiner right there for everything he had done but didn't do it because of his beliefs and following orders. However, we then forward to when Reznov and the crew were going to a frozen German ship that contained something by the name of Nova 6. It was said that the Germans were going to use this Nova 6 gas on Moscow and Washington DC. But the Soviets were able to stop them and because of this, Reznov, Dmitry, Dragovich, Steiner, and the rest of the crew are heading to check out what's left of the gas. But the thing is, Dragovich wanted to see the effects of the gas firsthand, and so he tested it on our own soldiers, including Dmitry. And so we're forced to watch him die a horrible death like a pig right in front of us to Nova 6. But before Reznov also gets a taste of the gas, a bunch of British soldiers launch an attack on the ship, and now we're in a three-way battle with British, Soviets, and Germans. However, Reznov decides that the Nova 6 gas is too dangerous for anyone to have and blows it up. Reznov escapes with this boy, and the ship blows up, killing everybody on it, and it sinks into the frozen water. Then he finishes the story by telling us that as long as Steiner is alive, he can keep making Nova 6 gas for Jagovic and tells us that they all must die. In our next mission, we're back in the Vietnam jungle where we start in a crash helicopter and both our pilots die. We are about to drown until Reznov again comes and saves us by opening the door. We swim up to this guy, take his AK, going brrrr on all the Asians. Then we meet up with the crew and go through all the huts that these people are hiding. We're ordered to go check out one of these rat holes that lead to a small tunnel with just us and Swift. But again, we see Reznov is here to help us and as we're talking to him swift starts getting mad what the fuck's wrong with you mason you gotta keep your shit swift dies and we are able to save him there's vc all throughout and it basically turns into a horror game but eventually you and reznov make it out and as the cave is starting to come down on you you gotta jump to the helicopter and escape we stay in the jungle in order to locate a crash ship that contains nova 6 and we ride in on them boats yes reznov woods bowman everybody along with the young kid who woods really likes and the village is burning the rolling stones is playing but then the kid dies woods cries and we make it onto land after getting up into the ship we grab a china lake trying to hold the vietnamese back and then some missile shows up the plane goes down and guess who it is dragovich and kravchenko have again captured us and they stomp on our head we wake up with woods being held in wooden cages before being carried out to play a game of russian roulette the soviet man tells bowman he must play or he dies but bowman refuses and then he gets beat to death with a steel pipe right in front of him. then woods sits down and while him and mason are coming up with the plan the bookie is getting impatient they decide they're gonna take one chance at this Luckily, the gun dry fires, and now it's Mason's turn. He calls out the enemies behind Woods and takes his shot, killing the guy, pulling out his strap, and taking out the rest of the VC, but not before the Russian escapes. Mason and Woods chase him through the cave and find him climbing up a hatchet before shooting him and avenging Bowman. Then we steal a helicopter and pilot it all the way near Kavchenko's compound. We free some of the American prisoners as well as our boy Rezna. We go through the entire cave before making it to Kavchenko's office, and then he starts beating us to death, but Woods sneaks up behind him and stabs. Absent. However, Kravchenko pulls out a grenade and Woods has to drag him out the window as the grenade goes off. Then we see a shadow over us and it's of course Reznov. In that office, we find the documents that lead us to Rebirth Island. Mason and Reznov arrive at Rebirth dressed as some Russian military officers. They take out the first person they see and go on a crazy stealth mission throughout the island to make it to Steiner. They have to take out guards and hide from helicopters until they finally make it to the roof of the place where Steiner is. They go on a two-man massacre, killing everybody in that white-ass place, including the pigs. They were testing here on both animals and humans, but we eventually make it to Steiner and Reznov gets his revenge. I know you. Borkuta, you don't know what we did to you. Mason, talk to me. You're evil. 
has claimed the lives of many good men. No law. Killing me will not stop Nova. I, I do not care about Nova. My name is Victor Reznor. And I will have my revenge. Then we also get to play the mission through Hudson's eyes. And they were trying to get Steiner and keep him alive because he knew where the numbers broadcast station was. Hudson, Weaver, and the crew stormed the island before getting Nova 6 gas dropped on their heads and they're forced to put on hazmat suits. But once we arrive at the facility, there's not many people left since Mason and Reznov already took care of most of them. However, we are now on the opposite side of the window towards Mason and we can see him as he's about to kill Steiner and we try to break through the window to stop him, but it is too late. We knock out Mason with his own gun and now Alex Mason is the only link we have to the broadcast station. But as you can see, Victor Reznov was never there and he wasn't the one who shot Steiner. In the next mission, we wake up in our interrogation room and the man who's been talking to us the whole time was Hudson. He screams at us in frustration and tells us that Reznov is dead. But then we knock out Hudson cold with a clean left hook and stagger our way through this place while getting flashbacks at every point and screaming out for Reznov. And then we get a flashback to Vorkuta where we again see Dragovich and Steiner operating on. They wanted us to kill our own president and sabotage America. However, Hudson comes back and tells us that Victor Reznov has been dead all this time. Dragovich brainwashed you, but Reznov had plans of his own. He was never in Vietnam. The real defector with the Nova 6 dossier died during the attack on the Mac V. He was never in the rat tunnels. He was never at Rebirth Island. <laughs> Mason! My name is Victor Reznov. Mason, no! Step 8, Reznov! Freedom! For you, Mason! Not for me! Victor Reznov's been dead for five years. He died at Vorkuta during the escape. All the years you thought he was with you, that was just in your mind. It turns out that Reznov had done a counter brainwashing on Mason and he wanted to carry out his work and kill Dragovich, Kravchenko, and Steiner. Reznov programmed Mason to kill these three men no matter what, overriding what they had done to Mason in Vorkuta. That's why anytime we were in a near death situation, Reznov would always seemingly pop up and save us. It also explains why there was numbers popping up every time he appeared and why no one else ever acknowledged him besides Mason. Hudson explains to us that there are hundreds of sleeper agents everywhere and they're about to launch a Nova 6 invasion on America. And Alex Mason is the last shot to try to stop them, but in order to do that, he needs to remember where the numbers were being broadcast from. And eventually, we do. And so Alex Mason and the rest of the CIA are heading to Cuba, where the Rizalka ship is being based and where their numbers are being broadcast from. Dragovich is also said to be aboard it, and this is the place we started the game, and it will be the place that we ended. We first launch an attack through the air on a helicopter before getting aboard the ship and clearing out the path Dragovich. But then we find out that the Rizalka is just the base and the real number station is underwater and so Mason and Hudson have to swim down there while Weaver calls in the Navy. We eventually make it to the broadcast, shut it down, but then Dragovich appears and is about to kill us until Hudson distracts him. And we pull him into the water before drowning him to death. Try to fuck with my mind! You fail! You don't know anything! Try to turn me against my own! Tried to make me kill my own president! Tried? Mason! With the ship coming down, Mason has to swim back to the surface and is pulled up and greeted by Weaver along with the US military as we have successfully stopped Nova 6. This has got to be not only the greatest Call of Duty story ever, but the greatest story in gaming history. And if you guys are interested, I've done another video going into some other Black Ops mysteries like did Alex Mason actually kill JFK? Or even showing proof that Reznov is actually alive. Weird, I know, but Victor Reznov is actually still out there. And perhaps Vorkuta wasn't his last stop after all.